Hello everybody, this is the second part of symmetrical versus asymmetrical um, orientation of call system that is um, to investigate the geometrical influence um, of power system. For those of you who see this video the first time, I recommend to watch the first part first because I will not go through the length um, of going through the frequency here on my oscilloscope anymore. I will just show the results. So, to understand here what I'm doing is I apply the so-called golden mean or the golden ratio, the proportion between the primary and the secondary. What does it mean? So the golden ratio or phi is 1.618 so that has to be multiplied by the length. So if you have a dimension like here is a secondary linings, 75 centimeter, I multiply it with 1.6180. That gives me a value. Then I subtract the 75 centimeter as well. That gives me the longer side of the coil. Then I take this value, so around 40. My, so 75 minus 40, something like that. So I'm ending up here with 29 centimeter. So I will have the exact definition here on my on my um, title. You will see that. So I line then on 29 centimeter exactly in the center, the primary. So this is literally then my uh, alignment to the golden mean of the primary. So the first chart is here from the asymmetrical coil, the voltage propagation. Um, it's quite interesting that voltage is very often aligned between north and south pole or right and left hand side. You see it in the so called dips here in equal um, harmonics or uh, in odd and even harmonics if you want. And when we go over then to the plotted chart it will become even clearer um, what this will mean for the power propagation in the system. Bear in mind that the voltage of input that the 20 volt input and the 15 volt on the driver side has not changed. So that is very important to note. Here are the two plotted charts from asymmetrical on and symmetrical coils plotted on top of each other. The dotted line is representing the symmetrical coil. The solid line above is representing the asymmetrical coil. What is clear here and can be spotted right away is that the voltage difference or um, the voltage um, propagation on the symmetrical side is much lower than on the asymmetrical side for the same voltage input. What is also quite remarking, which I mentioned before, is that very often, even for an asymmetrical coil, that the voltage is almost aligned for every um, node of the harmonics. So that's an interesting phenomenon, and that has an has an impact later on, and that will be quite um, obvious when we go over to the power chart. Here is a plotted power chart now in logarithmic um, display form. That means you have the division by 10. So you have 10, 100, 1000. So it becomes much more obvious what's going on here. So the interesting part is, if you remember from the first video, that's uh, highest value of COP was 52. Guess what? 
here's the highest value, um, value is almost twice as much, it's 93. And where does that happen? If you look at the blue line, that is the power input side. Look at the green side, that is the COP, and the red side, uh, that is the power output. So we have, if you want, um, the first alignment, where the power goes down to almost a minimum, and that reaches um, with a voltage above at 0.44 kilohertz, and that's interesting because I did show you the spark before at 44.45. At that level, exactly, I have the highest value all over the coil. But what is more interesting is because of all these nodes we have seen before in the voltage chart, I have many, many, many values above the 50 range, and I marked a couple of here. So we have an overall power distribution which is far above the value of the symmetrical coil. But the most power application happens in the first 100 kilohertz. Anything higher is dropping down. As you can see, you have in the middle um, the blue line makes a little curve up and down. That means that there is more power um, actually consumed on the input side but it does not really reflect to a great deal. I marked the middle uh, one um, for you to give you an idea, so that's only 34. Um, but that is very important to note. So here in comparison, again, I um, picture the symmetrical chord orientation, um, the power propagation with the COP chart. Please um, move forward back for the slider to compare them. I don't want to make it too complicated with an overlay, but you might not feel, you might not see the difference as that obvious. But what you might notice is that in the first 100 kilohertz, on the symmetrical side, nothing is really happening here, but on the asymmetrical side, there is a lot happening. And then when we go over to the COP chart, which is the next chart, it becomes more obvious because I overlay the COP value from symmetrical with the COP value from asymmetrical orientation. Here you see the COP overview between symmetrical and asymmetrical coil. So symmetrical is displayed in blue, the blue line. The red line is asymmetrical here. So that becomes very very obvious now. And I marked a couple of, of spikes in, in COP here. And interesting the value of 52, if you look on the right hand side where we had it on the asymmetrical coil, um, on the symmetrical coil, the value of 52 appears here um, as well, almost at the same frequency. But in the first 100 kilohertz, it dominates clearly on the asymmetrical side with many spikes far above what the symmetrical coil can deliver. So that concludes my introduction here and that should give you a good indication what you have to do next when you build your new call system.